friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And yeah, we're getting, well, we're past halfway through December. The year is almost over. Hopefully I get a couple more reviews out this year. And yeah, my hair is a complete mess today. So got my hat on today. I'm gonna try to grow it, probably. Uh, as you may have also noticed, I might be growing a full beard, we'll see. You know, it's in the in-between stage, kind of like me. I'm always in the in-between stage. Never quite where I want to be, but still not stuck where I used to be. Hey, maybe that's been my theme for the year. Who knows? Anyhow, today we're taking a look at this. This is the Kubi Bellis, the KU what, 342? Yes, the KU 342 model. There are six basic versions of this. There's one specialty version where they actually have a light blue blade and a bright yellow handle. It's an exclusive from, what is it, knifeglobal.com, which is a Kubi store, direct from Kubi store. They only sell Kubi stuff. It's also kubiknife.com. I got mine though from White Mountain Knives where you can save 10% with coupon code CCE. And that's a good thing because the base price for this the lowest price for this is what, $52.50 American? And White Mountain Knives has got the lowest price and then you save another 10% with that coupon code CCE right there. Hey, so why not? So that's what, $47.25, did I do my math right? Which is about 63 bucks Canadian and if you're in Canada, uh, go get one of these. They've got this one, this exact one, and they've got a black one with a bead blast version of the blade and there's 71 Canadian. So that's $8 Canadian more than it is at White Mountain Knives with White Mountain Knives' discount. You save some money crossing the border and stuff. Not much, not much actually, because shipping from the States is cheaper than shipping within Canada for some stupid reason. So no matter where you are, you can either use those international stores. I'll leave links down below for that. You can use White Mountain Knives. You can use Blades Canada. You can get this knife most places around the world. So what's this knife like? Well, come on down to my tabletop and we'll take a look at it. All right, here it is. This is a sub three inch knife, just barely under three inches. We've got a liner lock that's got thumb studs and it's a little bit dirty right there. Huh. Why is that dirty there? Yep, it is just loose dirt. It's dirty because I actually use the knives. I test them and uh, carry them and cut stuff with them, all that kind of stuff before I do the review. I don't just unbox it and play with it for a little while and you know hit record on the camera. There are a few other reviews out here. Uh, not many reviews out there. I've looked at the thumbnails. I don't watch other reviews. I've looked at the thumbnails and uh, what is it, Metal Complex from the thumbnail seems to really like this knife. He says it's one of the knifiest knives he's knifed in a while. So yeah, maybe you're gonna like it too. Do you think I like it? Well, keep watching and you'll find out. Uh, let's describe this knife first. We got a drop point blade, AUS 10 steel, and there's the focus on my finger. There you go. There's AUS 10 steel on here. Nice small badging for that. AUS 10 is really good. It's roughly like uh, 440C, but a modern version of it. It's just a little bit nicer than 440C. Rockwell on this thing is usually around 60, you know, 59, 61. You know, it could be less. Generally not more than 61. So the thumb studs are not too big. Deploy the blade that way, or you got a flipper here. You can deploy the blade whichever way you want to use the flipper for. Or if you want to do the bottom flick on the thumb stud, yeah. those are the two main ways to deploy the blade. We've got a liner lock, uh, alignment out of the box. Look at this, right down the middle, just like it should be. Alignment for the uh, lock, you know, how early or late it is. Perfect, it's exactly where it should be on a brand new knife, in my opinion, of course. Each person that's doing a review does their own opinion. Uh, looks quite nice where it's locked up there, so I like that. We've got uh, ball bearings in here, and I'll tear do the tear down and show you that a little bit later on. Action's quite nice. The detent's really nice. Holds on just with the right amount of tension. I, it's dialed in quite nicely. We've got G10 
black wash blade or bead blast finish. I really don't like bead blast finish. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Hopefully somebody here can answer it for me. I obviously don't know everything. I have a bias against bead blast or sand blast finish because I think it's going to rust more easily. Like this thing has got between 13 and 14% chromium in there, which means it's just on the side of stainless steel. It is a stainless steel, but it's not a super stainless steel. And so I'd rather have these black wash, the, uh, you know, black coating on here. It's generally a titanium coating when they do black wash. And then they put it through a stone wash. It just sort of gives it that nice little slightly mottled kind of look to it. Looks quite nice if you ask me. And it gives a protective coating on the finish. I much prefer stone wash, just straight regular stone wash. That's my favorite finish. But the question I'm asking you, do you know of somebody who's done a proper um, investigation into does uh, which types of finishes on a steel uh, are the most corrosive or the least corrosive? If somebody's done a study like that, be it on a website, be it in a book, you know, whatever, give me the details down below. Uh, I want to know if somebody's done a proper study, not, not just, you know, one test or two, but a proper study on which way of finishing the knife gives the best finish, uh, the best result in terms of corrosion. So the type of finish on a steel gives the best corrosion resistance and which gives the worst corrosion resistance. Maybe I'll change my mind on on bead blast finish or stone wash fin or sand blasted finish because maybe they do better than I feel like they do. I feel like they don't do it very well. Anyhow, the blade shape. We've got a drop point here. We've got a flat finish. It doesn't come up to the spine. There's a nice flat section up here. Uh, we've got a bit of a choil here. It's a little bit big. The transition here, let me see if I'll point with this thing. It starts the full thickness right here. And it comes down and ends the full thickness just before the edge starts. It's a bit wider than I'd like. I'd like that step to be a little more quick. I've done a video about this in the past. Uh, maybe I'll link it you know, up in the corner right here. We'll see. Uh, when it takes a long time like that, it gives room for people to think that the designer has put in a finger choil. But it's not really a forward finger choil here. It's just a big sharpener's choil. We've got jimping on the spine. Very nice jimping. I'm very happy with this jimping. And if you don't use your finger up here, which is kind of risky because you're getting in danger territory, it's easy to slide in there. Uh, the jimping here is really nice. If you do go this way, it's still quite good because you still have a fair bit of, you know, three or four, maybe almost half that jimping, three or four of those jimps where you get your texture on for your thumb to keep it in place and everything. It's just not comfortable doing this with this knife that for me. So, you know, the regular grip like this, the jimping's awesome. Very well, well done. On this side here, we've got some more badging. We've got Kubi on the main bevel here. I'd prefer if they would have put it up top here and made it just slightly smaller, but hey, they've been making their logos smaller over time, which is a good thing. So they're moving in the right direction, but they got the KB here as well for, I don't know, Kubi? I don't know what the B stands for, uh, but KB right here on the pivot pin and T8 screw here, T8 body screws quite nice back here. Uh, T6 screws for the pocket clip. That's a little bit harder to get away from. And they're pretty good. I, I like these screws. I like these T8 screws an awful lot. They're well done. Good screws. So the handle's got just a basic kind of shape, nicely rounded, chamfered on the edges, nice texture on the G10, offers good amount of grip. I'm really happy with that. And of course, this natural G10, I could uh, dye it if I wanted to. We've got an extra hole here. That means we could put this pocket clip on either side. Uh, let's see this pocket clip in action. Climbs over because it's got the bent over spoon right there and holds quite well. It's got strong grip, not too strong, very nicely done. And the knife hides in the pocket. Very happy with this pocket clip. And the pocket clip sticks out just a little bit past the end of the handle right there. 
very happy with Kubi's pocket clips in general. So that's nicely done. We've got spacers at the back here, typical hourglass shaped spacers, and they're nice and black, so that's nicely done. There's no lanyard hole. You could tie off on that back spacer if you want to, but there's no lanyard system on this knife. If that's what you want, this knife's not gonna give it to you. We've got skeletonized liners in there. Lock up, like I said, was very good. We've got just a little bit more of a cutaway on this side, gives you access to that lock bar. It's got sort of that bumps, call it jumping for lack of a better word, to get your thumb in there to disengage it. It's got a good amount of tension on it, which I mean not too much, not too little, so I like that. And uh, it holds on well. There's no blade play side to side, up and down. Everything's very secure. Love that. One of my favorite things about this is I like the flipper. We've got jumping going up the front of it and across the top of it. So if you're just doing, you know, oh, I did it too lightly, of course. Light switch method, no problem. Sliding over the side of it works just well. However you want to deploy this knife using that flipper works quite well. Right-handed, left-handed, left-handed thumb stud works fine. So happy with that. My hands are just barely in the extra large range and I can get a full four finger grip on this knife. It's a good size, I really like it. Now there's one thing some of you guys have already noticed. What's this dark blotch over here? Well, I believe that's oil that's in the pivot between the, actually, actually it was pivot oil, that's between the liner and the G10 and it's dirty right there. Yeah, hmm. Before I take it apart to confirm that, which I'm very sure will confirm it. How well does this knife cut? Well, it wasn't sharpened all that well, but the edge is quite thin and it was made fairly sharp from the factory. It's not terribly sharp right now, but it was quite sharp from the factory. What I get a score 175 best, which is pretty good. And being quite thin at this uh, main cutting area and a little bit thicker up here, not quite 20 thou up here, which is half a millimeter. It's a little bit, just the tiniest bit under that right there, and it's quite a bit thinner here, which helped it to cut quite well. It's a nice cutting knife. Now, reverse grip, very comfortable on this. Even a pull grip is comfortable. Hammer grip, uh, regular saber kind of grip. It's, it's a nice, nice knife. I'm very happy with how it feels in the hand. Feels secure, nice and thin. And if you know how to sharpen a knife, you can make this edge super de duper -dee. Just awesome. Let's take this thing apart and show you how it's constructed and we'll see about that oil. Okay, so I've taken it apart here. Let's first take a look at this. I already saw it on the pivot pin. There's a little bit of oil there. You can see some glint here. If it'll focus up here. See that? There's oil on the outside of the G10 there. And when I take this off, there's all that oil. You can see it there on the black liner side and you can see it there on that. So let's wipe that off of there because we don't need that oil. I got these parts clean now. Let's put them together and see how they look. Oh, I didn't wipe the inside there. But that's gonna fix that look. That's gonna take it away right away. It's just with natural G10, I'm just wiping out the inside of this now here. With natural G10, if you get a dark spot, especially it's gonna happen around the pivot, that's because there's way too much oil in that area. And I'm gonna dry off this thumb stud as well. By the way, the thumb stud has got this uh, cutaway section right here and there's a raised section there. That means you can have a proper uh, fixed pivot pin, non-spinning, and still have a fully round pivot pin like this, which is quite nice to have. So I like a fully round pin, I like that. Uh, of course, if you remember, we first saw Civivi doing that and other companies joined in when they figured it out. So that's nice. We've got the ceramic ball bearings, and what are there? There's nine bearings in each one of these with a phosphor bronze cage, nicely done. And uh, here's the screws. And I'll show you a close up of that. The uh, pocket clip screw has got a little bit of blue on it right there, right in the middle of your screen. 
got skeletonizing on this side of the liner. Of course, we got skeletoning, skeletonizing on this side of the liner. Well done. It's well constructed, well made. Let's put it back together again. Just before we go over the measurements, see it's nicely cleaned up there. You can't see that dark area back here anymore. And another thing, look at these screws. This thing's been put together at least three times, once at the factory, uh, once by me when I got it from my friend Dave. Uh, I have my knife shipped to Dave in Nebraska and he takes them apart, mails me the blades and the handles separately. So I put it together for the unboxing video and now I put it together again. So it's been taken apart at least twice and put together at least three times and these screw heads aren't all damaged. You heard me complain on a recent video about how black screws, the coating starts to come off. It's a little bit of wear on this main pivot screw, but these other screws look brand new, even on the close-ups. They're just perfect. And I'm always pleasantly surprised at how much better a knife performs when you put in good or very good aftermarket lubrication. I use Gunny Glide and uh, I use it exclusively anymore. And the action's even nicer than it was. And the action was pretty nice out of the box. The only thing I haven't done is sharpen it yet, but I don't know if you saw it on the uh, sharpener trial images. There's a little bit of coating wore off right here. I suspect that that happened during sharpening at the factory on both sides. Uh, when I sharpen it, it'll be easy to sharpen to the end here without getting into, you know, the end of that plunge. Nicely done. So now for the measurements and the sizes, all the specs. The weight of this knife, 108 grams. That's 3.81 ounces. So it's not a light knife by any stretch. Oh, I didn't do the balance point before. There's the balance point. Quite nice. How sharp was it from the factory? I said 175 bests. 140 to 150 is about average for the knives that I review when I test it the way I test it on my equipment. So don't compare my best numbers, my sharpening numbers, uh, sharpness numbers with other people's sharpness numbers because everybody does a little bit different technique. There's a human fudge factor. So this is not quite as sharp and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Let's do the lengths and stuff. The cutting edge length, so tip to the sharpness trail right here in a straight line, that is 71.4 millimeters, 2.81 inches. The blade length, so tip to the closest spot on the handle. I've got 75.7 millimeters, 2.98 inches. The thickness of the blade stock, measured at the flat section back here, 3.05 millimeters. That's 0.12 of an inch, almost an eighth of an inch, just shy of an eighth of an inch. And the blade depth this way, it's biggest right here. It keeps getting smaller and smaller all the way to the tips, right at the very heel. 27.8 millimeters, 1.09 inches. Thickness behind the grind, it's thinnest right here at the heel and thickest at the tip. So 0.37 to 0.49 millimeters. So the average is 0.44 millimeters, which is 17 thousandths of an inch. Uh, that means it's about 14 and a half thousandths to 19 and a half thousandths. Not bad. Not bad at all. The average of the grind angles is 25.7 degrees on this side and 25.5 on this side. That's why the sharpness score wasn't quite as good. We're talking over 50 degrees for the cutting edge to have to, you know, to break through material. I prefer it to be like 36 degrees total like 18 per side generally on a knife like this, EDC. 27.3 degrees here, 24.1 degrees there, 3.2 degrees of change. That's not terrible, 3.2 degrees. This side started at 26.6, went to 24.4. That's 2.2 degrees of change. The variableness isn't bad, bad, but the grind angles should have been less. More measurements. The handle length, not counting the pocket clip because that sticks out a little bit. 104.4 millimeters, 4.11 inches. The grip area, since we've got a rounded section here, it's not an exact number. It's around seven cent, around nine centimeters or three and a half inches. The thickness of the handle on the G10 surfaces right here, 13.2 millimeters, 0.52 of an inch, so just over a half an inch thick. The handle depth, that's this measurement at the widest point, 26.2 millimeters, 1.03 inches, and the widest point, 
you know, to go into your pocket is up here, 33.9 millimeters, 1.33 inches, and the total length of this thing is around 180 millimeters, which is 7.09 inches. So three and four, basically, very good proportions, yeah. I think for the price, it's a good buy. It's a, quite a good buy. I should be reviewing more Kubi knives. Uh, they do some weird stuff, but they do some nice stuff. They just seem to be quite consistently, they're not 100% consistent, but quite consistently, you know, ahead of the curve between how good the knife is and how much it costs. They're one of the better companies these days and have been for a couple years now. It's a good design. It's a really good EDC choice. Nice belly, you know, a little bit of, you know, piercing kind of quality to it, but slicey and cutty, especially after you put on a better edge on for the sharpening. Happy. Very happy with this knife. Thanks for watching, my friends. Thank you to my supporters. You guys are stunning. I appreciate your help an awful lot. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. <laughs>